Now, I believe very strongly that we are entering into a new season. And uh, uh, as Ashley Ankle also messaged me today and yesterday, and uh, as most of you were also commenting, you know, what, what we heard on Saturday, okay, what we heard on Saturday carries a very important, uh, uh, carries a very important and significant message for the season that we are entering in. Because in the kingdom of God, if you are not a person who is invested, that means uh, if you are somebody who thought the kingdom will manifest on the inside of you, and if you thought the kingdom will manifest through you without any effort or without a price to pay, then uh, you need to really rethink your theology. And the uh, reason why I'm sharing this today is because, you know, in a month or two, we will be in the Christmas season. And uh, in the Christmas season, everybody's uh, mind is going jingle bells, jingle bells. It's a little difficult to keep the, you know, to keep the focus on. And then, you know, uh, we will be entering into the end of the year. And while we enter into the end of the year, uh, many people have regrets. Many people have good things to think about. And, you know, many people have things to plan for the next year okay so as i said at the beginning of this year as i said at the beginning of this year that you know though we might specifically receive a word from god every new year or though we might specifically receive a word from god every new birthday that we celebrate and though we might receive a specific new word from god every season of our life we also need to understand that God's will and God's plan has already been laid out. So, you know, all these are small words. All these are words that are giving us direction to go to the ultimate destiny. Okay. That are giving us direction to go to our final destiny. And our final destiny is not heaven. Our final destiny is us coming into the full understanding full knowledge, full stature of Christ. Okay, that's our final destiny. So, you know, every word that God gives us is a redirection into the destiny. Okay, every word that God gives us is like a redirection into the destiny. For example, if I wanted to go from Hyderabad to Bangalore, I can never say, you know, this is the road, I'm going to pick this road and without taking a left or right and I'm going to land up in Bangalore. Okay, I'm not going to land up in Bangalore. Probably I'm going to bang some building straight after I start and be there. Why? Because I need to understand that, you know, there are some specific turns I need to take, there are specific highways I need to take, and, you know, uh, that is how I will be reaching Bangalore. So God's word to us specifically in certain seasons is either to accelerate us, is either to align us, or is either to, uh, you know, uh, get us into right direction so that we reach the final destiny. So once we understand that we are the ecclesia of God and we are God's governing body here, we need to understand that God's ultimate end is that earth will become like heaven. And for earth to become like heaven, I cannot be, uh, I cannot be a misrepresentation of God to the creation around me because the entire creation is not waiting for Jesus to come back again. The entire creation is waiting for you and for me. Okay, everyone say with me, the creation is waiting for me. Right? The entire creation is waiting for us to manifest as the sons of God. Right now, the creation doesn't see us operating like God unto them. Right now, the creation doesn't see us giving redemption unto it. Okay? So, my whole purpose on this earth is to bring a little more of heaven onto earth. My whole purpose is to become the fullness of heaven to the entire creation. But this will not happen till I experience this myself. So until I experience heaven in my own soul, until I experience heaven in my own body, until I experience that kind of intimacy, the redemptive, resurrective power of God in myself, I will not be able to continuously and diligently keep giving this away unto the creation. Now, for me to be completely transformed, for me to reach my final destiny, I need to understand that there is a price I need to pay. So I'm going to say something here, which you need to catch. And this is very profound, okay? A Christian does not fast. A Christian does not fast, okay? 
a Christian lives a fasted lifestyle. A Christian lives a fasted lifestyle. So, you know, you might immediately go to the thing of food, but food included, there are many things. But food included, there are many things. For example, you know, um, I was talking to Benny Joshua, the singer, and you know, sometimes I talk to pastors, sometimes I talk to my own media team, okay? Now think about our life eight to 10 years back, okay? Eight to 10 years back, when we would look at a particular serial on TV, or when we would look at a particular movie, what would we do? We would stick to it till it is over because we had this fear. Okay, if I'm going to lose this episode now, I will not be able to see it again. And you know, if probably it's a very good episode or something like that, we have this fear that you know we will miss out on what is there. Though we know everything is enacted, though we know everything is enacted, there is this fear that we don't want to lose out on what's happening in the serial. Okay, especially the women will know there are daily soaps that come in the evening, 7 30, 8 30, 9 30, ETV, Mar TV, Wish TV, you know. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, many men are laughing now, right? So what we need to understand is, you know, eight to 10 years back, we were like that. But today, imagine even with the gospel, okay? When you are watching God TV and you are seeing a particular program, you will never flip out. Why? Because you are scared. Oh, if I leave now this program, they might not rebroadcast it again. And, you know, I don't want to miss this revelation. I don't want to miss this thing. But today, my friend, what has happened with technology, okay? We keep seeing one thing and we immediately flip to the other. We immediately flip to the other. That's the reason I don't give sometimes my live on Facebook because I know what happens on Facebook, okay? You're seeing my live here and then you minimize my live and you read some other somebody else fight going on on Facebook and then you check whose anniversary is there and then Facebook pops up your, according to your Amazon search, Facebook pops up an ad for you and then you check your Amazon deal going on, anniversary, Great Indian Shopping Festival goes on and you know, you don't realize that they're emptying your mind at the cost of your concentration. Right? We don't realize that. Right? So that is how our life used to be. Today, we are in different kind of lifestyle. We are not scared of losing anything. Okay? What we do is, you know, we look at this message five minutes and we look at another serial for 10 minutes. Then we go into the trailer of another movie. You know, we do so many things. Why? Because now we are very relaxed. Whatever I miss, I can actually recover, recoup by checking it out later. Okay? And some people saying like this, you know, some people doing like this, they have missed sermon upon sermon, Zoom call upon Zoom call, series upon series. And they, when, when you share the same sermon third time, they say, oh, pastor, wonderful message. Immediately I realized, okay, first two times this guy didn't hear it. Okay. So today it's like that. So when I say a Christian lives a fasted lifestyle, what do I mean to say? You know, a religious mind always tries to define everything in terms of sin and not sinful. A religious mind always tries to define everything in terms of sinful and not sinful, okay? A spiritual mind always tries to define everything in terms of beneficial and not beneficial, okay? Let me repeat it. A religious mind always defines things in terms of sinful and not sinful. A religious mind always defines things in terms of sinful and not sinful. A spiritual mind always defines itself in terms of beneficial and not beneficial. What does Paul say? Paul says, hey, many things are allowed for me. And in this many things that are allowed for me, most of them are not even sin. Okay, they are good deeds. But he says, these good deeds are not beneficial. Okay. So there is, there is so much revelation going on, but why are we not seeing the manifestation is because every revelation requires an effort to see it into manifestation. It might be the meditation of our mind. It might be the confession of our mouth. It might be anything, but it does require effort. Okay, let me show you two verses. We're quickly going to read uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 62. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So what is Jesus saying? If you are going to plow, remember, once you plow, you have to seed. 
once you seed you have to water once you water you have to fertilize once you fertilize you have to protect once you protect you have to wait till the tree comes once you wait till the tree comes you have to wait till it bear fruit once it bear fruit you have to send the reapers or become the reapers and you have to take the harvest so what is he saying you count the cost of everything beforehand and then you put your hand to the plow if you're going to put your hand to the plow and look back that means what once you start plowing and then you say oh it looks difficult oh it looks like the seeds are not you know i i will not have seed oh it looks like you know my crop will not come if you're somebody who's looking back once you put your hand to the plow jesus is saying you're not fit for the kingdom of god in other words what is he saying the kingdom can be possessed only by those who are willing to see the end from the beginning the kingdom can be possessed only by those who are willing to see the end from the beginning then what is jesus saying saying the kingdom can be manifested only by those who are willing to pay the price from beginning till the end the kingdom can be manifested only by those who are willing to pay the price from beginning to the end you know some people sometimes they get caught up in small small things right they don't understand that till i have seen the manifestation of the kingdom in me and through me it is not yet done that's why sometimes some small blessings become big distractions when you don't have the end in mind your small blessings can become big distractions when you don't have the end in mind your small blessings can become big blockages okay sometimes you know uh, the other day i was just surveying people what are you doing these days what are you doing these days what are you doing these days and it so happens that you know every time somebody is buying a house that one month that one and a half month they become busy with the new house and suddenly they realize oh i'm caught unaware that you know in that season i was listening to the word so much in this season i'm not able to why because you didn't realize that the blessing can become a big distraction if you don't treat it properly if you don't treat the blessing properly your blessing can become a big distraction your blessing can become a big blockage to even get a blessing if you don't handle your blessing correctly if you don't handle your blessing correctly your blessing can become a big blockage to your next big blessing okay that is why we need to understand that we are stewards that we are stewards that means what no matter how much god blesses us no matter where god blesses us no matter how god blesses us we are stewards of god in every way has your influence grown in office you are still a steward of god has your influence grown in your community you are still a steward of god has your influence grown in your surrounding in your neighborhood and i'm in between your cousins and your relatives has god blessed you in a way that you know your influence has grown among them please remember you are a steward of god let not that blessing replace god's responsibility on your life let not the blessing replace god's mandate on your life let not the blessing throw you out of alignment into what god has called you to be okay now let's read few more verses luke chapter 14 verse 25 to 34 now great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them if any one comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes and his own life also he cannot be my disciple and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it less after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who who see it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10000 to meet him who comes against him with 20000 or else while the other is still a great way off he sends a delegation and asks condition of peace so likewise 
whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple salt is good but if the salt has lost its flavor how shall it be seasoned okay now don't misunderstand this verse jesus is not saying hate your father hate your mother hate your wife hate yourself okay because jesus said love your neighbor as you love yourself unless you love yourself you cannot love your neighbor okay say everyone say with me unless i love myself i cannot love my neighbor and this is the greatest commandment that i love god i love myself and thereby i love my neighbor okay so the same jesus who said love your neighbor as you love yourself okay will not say hate yourself but th this is jesus talking in terms of a certain aspect okay what is jesus saying jesus is saying you are the salt of the earth and jesus is saying you are salt of the earth because you are my disciples that means what you are salt of the earth because you are my disciple that means what if the salt loses its saltiness that means what if a disciple stops being a disciple if a disciple stops being a disciple then the disciple is one among the many in the world okay so we all know that we are not following christ because we will make it to heaven we all know that we are following christ or we are paying the cost of discipleship because discipleship is what will help us manifest our destiny here on earth discipleship is what will help us manifest our destiny here on earth so let me repeat what jesus is saying jesus is saying you are the salt of the earth so he's saying without you there is no flavor and taste and then he's saying if the salt loses its saltiness that means what what did i say what is the salt who is the salt the disciples are the salt not everybody is the salt not every church going christian is the salt not everybody who says i am baptized is salt not everybody who says i am a christian i am a convert is salt but who is salt the one who has flavor who is salt the one who has that uh, ingredient of god in him so who is that that one is the disciple if the salt loses its saltiness if the disciple is no longer in the discipleship okay everyone everybody understanding what i'm trying to say okay if you understand just wave your hand okay right you got it so jesus is saying if the salt loses its saltiness or he's saying if the disciple stops being a disciple then how shall that salt be of any use that means the salt will be in the curry but the taste will not be felt in the same way the disciples will be on this earth but the difference will not be seen between those who are disciples and those who are just mere christians or those who are mere men living on the earth and jesus is saying one thing jesus is saying before you start count the cost of the finish he says before you start count the cost of the finish to whom is he saying this he's saying this to a group of people who will say yes jesus i will follow you all to jesus i surrender right they will say like this but when it comes to the practicality of life they cannot surrender anything into god's hand they cannot listen to god's voice they want to do everything by themselves they want to do their will they want to get lost they don't want to get stuck in the problems they want to you know come into calamities and then they want to again cry out to god and say jesus have mercy on me so jesus is saying to those people and he's saying hey disciple if you lose your discipleship or if you are not a part of the discipleship process that means if you do not understand that you are following me to be transformed into my very image and likeness you are following me to be glorified just like i am glorified you are following me to be me on this earth you are following me so that you can be christ to the creation around you if you forget this and you do not embrace this process of discipleship then jesus is saying you are lost your favor and then jesus is saying probably you do not understand that you needed to make your mind up before itself what it would cost you to come to the end or what it would cost you see this example that jesus is saying the tower the hope okay what are these examples we are the house of god 
we are the city of god we are the temple of god what is god building today god is not building the country called israel god is not building the city called jerusalem god is building you and me who are his living temples god is building you and me who are his towers here on earth god is building you and me who are his home here on earth and god is beautifying us god is sanctifying us god is restructuring us god is you know uh, giving color to his art and god is saying if you would allow me to do it i can finish it but if you are all by yourself that means what you embrace me when you need me but you forsake me when you got what you get god is saying the work cannot be finished and god is saying you cannot be this way you need to count the cost before you start and he says if you do not count the cost before you start you will be stuck midway and people might laugh at you and they might say this guy started but where is he this guy started but where is he now he stuck by laying a foundation it was good he did not buy the land it was good he did not put the foundation it was good he did not erect the pillars why because when he erected the pillars people were uh, the entire colony was seeing that he is going to build a house but now the entire colony is seeing that his house has pillars but from last one year he has not put roof to the house and probably this man is not you know he doesn't understand commerce he doesn't understand maths or you know he doesn't know what it takes to build a roof and people are going to mock and jesus is saying count the cost beforehand and let me tell you my friend you know this is the truth those who come to god to satisfy their own need usually end up forsaking god once their need is met and those are the lullaby christians okay but if we are to be the mature sons of god we need to understand that our yes to god will cost us will yeah, our, our yes to god will cost us in the sense that we will have to say no to many things that no might not necessarily be to sin but it might be to many good things why because now you understand i am living a fasted life my source of energy my source of power my source of instruction my source of direction my source of what to do in life my source of where to go in life my source of how to spend my money my source of where to invest next my source of direction in life is in a person called christ and unless i invest in my communion with him unless i invest in my relationship with him unless i invest in my intimacy with him it's not going to happen in now tell yourself my friend the greatest price i will pay i will be paying is for intimacy you know many people think the greatest price we pay is for faith they say if i have faith for a car yes then i can achieve anything once you get your car my friend you going to just forsake jesus right the greatest price you going to be paying is for intimacy is a time when you don't need any physical thing at all but still you go to jesus because you're saying jesus i do not want to live by my own direction i do not want to live by my own intuition i do not want to live by the own impulses that i have in me i do not want my information to give me a direction let me hear your voice let me hear your voice and to the religious people that my sound so absurd because the religious mind is only concerned whether it's sinful or not sinful whether it's immoral or moral the religious mind is only concerned till there so everything that is moral and good the religious mind says it is okay if you indulge in it but the spiritual mind says anything that i indulge in excessively even the good even the things that are not bad even the things that are not sin that will actually start speaking to me instructing me and directing me in life let me stay away from it if i have any kind of indulgence let it be the presence of god and let it be the word of god if i have a very strong yes in life let it be to one thing that is his presence and his word why because my yes to his presence my yes to his word is going to make me say no to so many other things which the religious mind will think is foolishness but i know this is what will help the power of god to manifest in me and through me okay so i'm going to close today my friend we are going to pray together and i just want to encourage every one of you 
when we took this five days break and even before this, there must be a lot of people, you know, you must have gone off the fasting mode, you must have got spiritually a little derailed, this thing, that thing. Get on a 21 day fast from tomorrow. Get on a 21 day fast from tomorrow. Fast from that very thing that has caused, you know, how can you know if there are any gods in your life? Okay, let me finish with this. How will you know if there are any gods in your life? Before you hear the word of God, Whoever is speaking to you, most of the time, these gods are sitting in our mind, right? Google has also become a god these days. Google has also become a god that keeps putting googly these days, right? Right? Most of these gods are in our mind, right? These gods speak to us. It might be our money. It might be our social status. It might be our education. Anything that is replacing the voice of the Lord in your life is a God. And when you hear that God's voice and you listen to that God's instruction, things will look good for a certain time, my friend. But eventually, it is death and decay. That is the reason before that gods speak to you and direct your life, it is good. You cut off those gods in your life and you hear the voice of the living God. You hear the voice of the living God. And I just want to challenge you. When I say a fasted lifestyle, it is not only about food. It is so certainly about food, okay? If it was only about food, then I am the one who is least qualified. Because I just had mutton mandi and just had shower mind came, okay? If it was only about food, I'm the least qualified. But it is not only about food, my friend. It is not only about food. It is about anything that is replacing you from that is replacing you from going into God's presence and hearing his voice as if his voice is bread and water for you. It is anything. It might be Instagram that you see in the morning, first thing in the morning. It might be WhatsApp. It might be Google.com. It might be your daily chai. It might be your daily sightseeing in the morning. It might be your daily routine in the morning. Trust me, there are so many people who wake up in the morning, they never miss their gym. They never miss their morning walk, okay? I'm sorry to say I've been missing for one year, okay? They never miss all this, but they don't realize, yes, it is very good. That will help you live longer, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But there is something more important that will help you manifest, that will help you receive your incorruptible inheritance. And that is the word of the living God. He has a word for you every day, every moment for every circumstance and through you he can give a word to every person who comes in contact with you but the challenge is are you fasting from the other things so much that you actually value this thing so much okay just like you know when we were small and you know these days we had buffet uh, buffets everywhere you go to any restaurant you get buffet but when we were small Buffets were only there in marriages, okay? So in the evening, if we were going to go, go to a good marriage, we would prepare ourselves in the afternoon, okay? That day in the afternoon, we would eat veg, the rice and the dal, we will eat very less because we won't, don't want our tummy to be float, uh, bloating. Then in the evening, we don't eat pani puri that day. Why? Because we are going there and in the buffet, we want to eat well. In the buffet, in the marriage, we want to eat all we can. That is what is the same attitude we need towards listening to God's voice. Are you willing to cut many of those things that are not sinful, yet those can distract you from hearing Lord's voice? Are you willing to cut it off? If you are willing to cut it off and if you diligently practice, I really love what the uh, man of God, uh, uh, Benny Joshua said on Saturday. He said, diligent, consistent, communion with God. Diligent, consistent communion with God. Not one day, not two days, not alternate days, not last 30 days of the month when bank balance is low, right? Not last last uh, three days before your bill needs to be paid, not when floods come, not when COVID is on the rise, not when your area is in the red zone. Not like that, my friend. Every day, diligent, consistent communion with God. This is the call of a Christian, my friend. This is the call of cost of discipleship. And that is when we will be salt to the earth. Let's pray. 
Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone who is called today. As Father, as we realign, as we understand, Father, repentance is not a one-time act. But till we receive your kingdom in its fullness, until we are able to give this kingdom in its fullness, to be redemption to creation around us, Father. We need to keep repenting, Father. And Father, I pray for everyone over this call. I pray for myself. As there are things in our life, Father, that we need to fast from, to be able to listen to your voice clearly every day so that your voice will be the source, so that your words, so that your words will be the source of life. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we will see a breakthrough in each and every realm of our life, Father. Even those blessings that have become a distraction. I call forth people today to turn away from every distraction and look at the glorified Christ till they are transformed into the same image and the same likeness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please don't disconnect right now, my friend. Just have a very important announcement. From evening, I've been feeling the leading to send you one particular message on YouTube, okay? I'm not, uh, he's an elderly gentleman, but I'm not as good as him in teaching the word. I'm very frank in saying that, okay? So whatever message I wanted to share with you, uh, probably he will tell you from the biblical scriptures accurately. So right today in the Zoom, after the Zoom call on the WhatsApp, if somebody is not on WhatsApp groups, you can message us. Right today after the Zoom call on the WhatsApp, I'm going to post the link to this message. It's, I think the message is uh, longer than one hour. And as I already told you, nothing comes free, okay? You need to make that one hour time. Probably many of us just scroll one hour on Facebook, scroll one hour on YouTube, or you know, gossip one hour, or you know, talk about everything one hour. Probably these days we are following, Hyderabadic people are following the water news for one hour, you know? We are checking everyone's status, which colony is under the water, which colony is above the water, which MLA is going in the ship, uh, boat, uh, helping people, okay? Instead of that, I'm sure you can take one hour tonight and listen to this message. If you're somebody who can't do it tonight, first hour tomorrow, please listen to this message, okay? Bless you. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bless you.